coffee days are long gone. Modern cycling, previous uh, drugs scandals aside, has evolved into carefully calibrated diets for endurance. To get a sense of what it takes to feed a Tour de France professional cyclist, let's get a nutrition's uh, glimpse into the aspect of the race because I'm delighted we're joined by Stephanie Scalink, the sports dietitian for Little Trek, the men's and women's team. Welcome to France 24, Stephanie. It is great to speak to you. Thank you. First of all, uh, whatever you're doing, it's working well. You have a rider in the green jersey this year, don't you? Uh, yes, we have. Uh, unfortunately, today we had some bad luck with Matthias Kjellmose, who unfortunately crashed and had to uh, stop the race. But um, let's hope we can keep the green jersey. With Jonathan Milan and the rest of the team, just talk us through the calorie intake needed and how micromanaged it is now. Yes, well, I just saw the video. Um, I started in 2006 and even uh, since then I saw a big evolution. But if you compare to the video, it's even uh, a bigger difference. Um, to talk about the calorie amount, it's really different day per day because the stages are so different. Like today, it will be somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 calories for only the stage. So then you have a bit before and a bit extra after uh, to recover as well. So uh, many riders today had to eat about seven to eight thousand uh, calories. Um, look, just thinking about the guesswork that's involved for you and how much is it that you have to you know, look talking to them? How much has now become purely scientific, you know, continuous glucose monitors, things like that? Yes, um, cycling has is now even the reference for many other sports since it's uh, sometimes I say it's a riding laboratory um, because we can really measure everything. We can measure the calories it costs to do a certain exercise. We know their body composition. So we know exactly what a rider should um, have from his nutrition compared to what he really really needs. And of course, like you say, it's always making a prediction because we need to fuel them before they start and while they are riding. But then when they press stop on their um, monitors, then we immediately see what is the reality and was the prediction close enough or do we need to compensate um, after the race? The daily calories is huge that you just said. Am I right in saying it not long ago? You had rises per hour, kind of take, calorific, just taking in probably half of what they take now by the hour, whilst they're what, working at a rate of around 400 to 500 watts. So continually going pretty high speeds, having to take in just constant food. Yeah, and nutrition has always been important. But when I started, it's almost 20 years ago, I really had to convince uh, the riders, the cyclists, why nutrition is important, and yes, it will help you. While now you see that they they know, okay, they are not robots. In our team at Little Trek, we always uh, put the human first, and okay, we try to give them what they need, but also listen to their feedback, and, and because your uh, morale, as we say, is also very important. But now we know very well what they need and during the race and maybe that's a, a big piece of the puzzle we used to think that 60 grams of carbohydrates which is just one bottle of sports drink and one bar every hour was the limit but now we know that if we manipulate the drinks and the bars it sounds more technical than it really is but if we put the right sugar in it then you can even double this quantity every hour so if six hours long you can take almost what you need then that's what we see in the races um, many years ago if you saw the last one hour one hour and a half you've seen the race mm -hmm. now if you you've missed the first part then you've missed already a, a nice part of the race I want to talk about what things they can and can't eat, but let's take a look first at your countryman's training diet. So we just heard about it a moment ago leaving the tour today, but this is the, the diet on, on an average training day of the two-time world champion, Remco Evenepoel. First of all, I will start with my glass of water. Very important to rehydrate after a night of sleep. Here I have 70 grams of oats with about 40 grams of cashew nuts 
a banana and just a handful of uh, granola to top it off. Main course, I'll have about 250 grams of low-fat yogurt with some uh, Rice Krispies, about 30 grams and uh, 20 grams of honey balls. And then I made a, a two egg omelets with some pepper inside and uh, about 70 to 80 grams of bread with a bit of cottage cheese and Philadelphia. And of course the omelet on top. A good flat white to wake up the body and uh, a green tea with some ginger and honey inside. Good fuel for a big day of training. Now my first thought there is if that's reflected on a day of the tour, Stephanie, I'd be completely full. And, and how do you balance the fact that you're eating just the right food that you're setting off and your digestive system doesn't want to work into overtime? Yes, of course, these riders are trained in doing this. So um, I even think, I don't know if it's from a training camp or a training at home, but then um, riders are used to taking these big amounts. It's really like you train your muscle, you really need to train your digestion system. And also that's why when there's a rest day or an easier stage, we lower the amount of calories. They also need less, but we try also to give their bodies or digestion system a bit of rest, but they are used to it. And as you can see also Remco here, he makes like a buffet of uh, very different foods. Otherwise you get you get tired of eating only the same thing. And maybe that's where our chefs come in. At Little Trek, we have five chefs uh, that always in the Tour de France or in every race, we have a chef who makes it really um, enjoyable. And he, yeah, riders are looking forward to the dinner buffet while they've been eating all day. Is there a no-no for you? I notice I've seen um, something, you have several cookbooks, uh, the you know, the sports cookbook as well in, in Dutch at the moment, where you talk about a lot of the, the shops that you do and a lot of the, the foods that you choose, sweet potatoes, for example, you don't seem to touch potatoes. I don't know if there's a reason for that. And is there some foods that you say to riders, don't go near? Um, actually, no. I think if there's one thing that really doesn't help their performance or recovery, I would say it's alcohol. <laughs> but even during the tour, you will see that, especially when you won, maybe only when you won a stage, you will sip uh, a glass of wine or champagne, but they won't drink a lot because they know that it doesn't really help them. But anything else, uh, there is for sure, if you see the huge amount of calories that they burn, there is room for uh, something extra. There's riders who take uh, a bag of chocolates in their, in their luggage, or even we could provide them with something. And here you see our chef Mirko making pancakes, which is a perfect breakfast in a Tour de France. But um, when we win a stage, then he makes a tiramisu, which we don't even calculate it uh, <laughs> because it's so well deserved. And uh, yeah, I just mean there's always room for something small. And if that helps you or if that makes your day, then please have it. Uh, yeah, you and will how, be happy the day after. How hands-on can you be on the day when you're with them? I know you're rejoining the, the men's team uh, next week. You know, do you interact with the riders through the day? Do you try to get food down and say, you know, get this down you in the team car? Um, we really, really try during training camps when they're at home, when we prepare them to get ready to... Um, learn them what you need and when so that we don't have to remind them but for sure during a race especially when it gets a bit dangerous or a bit tricky uh, cold or rainy like uh, today at some part then our sports director will say it in their radio don't forget to eat and drink eat and drink and then sometimes even the most experienced riders uh, say oh yeah that's good that you say it, mm -hmm. uh, because I, I almost forgot. What about AI? Is it becoming a useful tool at all for cyclists' nutrition for you on the tour? Uh, for sure it is. We are working on it behind the scenes. At the moment, we still uh, trust our, let's say, 
a homemade tool where we have our database with all the data from previous or similar races from our riders, the tests that the doctors did, um, endurance tests, and uh, we check the profile of the races. So we have, um, I would say, a, a good system, a good working system, but surely uh, that would be the next step because we uh, as the team sports dietitians, we have a lot of work behind the scenes with the calculations. So it will for sure be uh, be be good. Also nowadays you have apps where if you take a photo of what you eat, then it says immediately what you've taken. So I think for sure in nutrition, there's um, there's a future uh, for AI. One issue I did hear, Stephanie, tell me to the extent that this is true, that even when the cyclist finished, like, for example, if Tadej Pogacar's got to do, he's got the new yellow jersey, or for, for Jonathan Milan in the green jersey on your team, rounds and rounds of interviews, that's a concern to you to some level because they're not eating, they're talking for three hours, and they might just appear later on, hours late at the dinner table, still in their dirty, sweaty cycling gear, and that becomes a factor for micromanagement to work out actually how you factor in the time off the bike just as they are on it. Yeah, although we really do our best um, in the team and for sure in today's team as well to make sure that the Swanier who's going to the finish line already packed the recovery box and the supplements or the recovery shake that he needs um, to make sure that while they, and sometimes you even see them drinking it during an interview and just not to waste any time. But surely to give their bodies rest, uh, you lose a bit of time. So there's all, yeah, it's an advantage if you have a jersey, a colored jersey, but it takes a bit of um, time to do all the interviews as well. What's your advice, Stephanie, to amateur cyclists who are sold and buy nutrition bars, gels while they're out on their bike up into the mountains and who don't have somebody advising or monitoring? Them? Like, Does it matter to you, for example, my Dad's been a cyclist for decades and he always swears by jelly babies, you know, sweet sugary snacks instead. What would you advise? Yes, I think that's not a bad idea. It's just if he would say, I really want to go long and and break a record or I want to do like a, a grand fondo where I where the result would be important, then it maybe it would be better to switch to the brands that really have um the products where you can eat a lot of. Um, but I think my message always to everyone who rides the bike is always to anticipate. Uh, many riders, they uh, start from home, they didn't eat enough before, they didn't fuel on their bike, they come home empty, they would eat everything they find and <laughs> way too much and not the healthy things. Um, so that's your body asking for what he what it missed before. So if you know that tomorrow morning you are going out with friends, please this evening already start fueling up with some rice or pasta. Make sure in the morning you had a good breakfast. Take some sports drink, take some bars. Um, even if it sounds just like a training, you will be the best one in the group and the peloton will not, will not leave you. And when you come home, you're less hungry, but that's the point. Uh, you should have had it before and just do you mind me asking stephanie what's your what drew you to cycling nutrition because i think i'm right in saying your story you trained some of the best world athletes in pentathlon you were the andelect uh, team uh, dietitian as well what brought you into wanting to be involved in the tour de france i think um it's um well, for sure, cycling is very uh, famous in Belgium. Uh, everyone is cycling crazy. So I've always uh, always watched it. And um, the endurance type of effort they have to do, and especially three weeks like in a Grand Tour as the Tour de France, but also the Giro and the Vuelta, it really fascinated me. So at one point, I always combined football and cycling, but then when nutrition got uh yeah more and more important or seen as more important in cycling i i had to choose and i uh, chose cycling and when you started i know that teams because i followed cycling for many years didn't have nutritionists dietitians now are you seeing an explosion of, of interest in belgium and elsewhere 
Yes, um, I think there is no team anymore without a chef or without a sports dietitian. It's um, it's becoming a part or it became a part of the, the big puzzle. While before riders used to say, yeah, but I have a good bike and a good coach and mm. I really don't see it, what nutrition will do for me. And now sometimes we even have to slow down the young athletes who or young cyclists who see what the pros are doing and maybe don't see the chocolates that they still eat or the so sometimes they are too uh, too much in the details and we need to slow them down so um yeah you can really see the difference and just a final thought stephanie i have to ask you many people say it is teddy pogachar the ghost or are you staying loyal to your hero of your country eddie merckx Oh, that's really a, a very difficult question. I think um, Eddie himself would say you cannot compare uh, two different uh, time or periods. So I, I cannot really choose. <laughs> <laughs> different time, different methods. Great to talk to you this evening. Thank you for coming on France 24. Uh, Stephanie Scalig, uh, who is the sports dietitian for the Little Trek men's and women's team and author of many sports cookbooks as well. Thank you for your time.